ICD-9 was the ninth version in effect back in 1988, 1989, when all of the requirements for putting a diagnosis on claims began, and it has been in place ever since. It's a numeric system of three to five digits for diagnoses, diseases, disorders, uh, many circumstances uh, for which a patient might encounter a physician. There's two sets of supplemental codes that begin with a letter. There's a series of B codes for the health status of the patient and a series of E codes for errors and accidents that might befall a patient. In contrast, the ICD-10 system is always seven characters. They are alphanumeric characters. The first place is always a letter. The second place is always a number. And after that, it could be letters or numbers depending on where you are in the classification system. ICD-9 had about 14,000 codes. In contrast, ICD-10 now has 70,000 codes and is growing. Every year, there are requests actually to have even more codes added to the system, trying to describe the exact details for which a patient might encounter a physician. The most recent and best example I can explain is trying to align the outdated diagnoses for pulmonary hypertension currently in ICD-10 to the modern World Health Organization classification of the five categories of pulmonary hypertension. The probably most important aspect of the change from ICD-9 to ICD-10 is the fact that it did require change. It was painful, it was expensive, but it was necessary to move the United States from a 30-year-old outdated system to the modern ICD-10 system that's used by many countries in the third world. But we have successfully negotiated that change and physicians are now largely using ICD-10 codes in their processes for providing patient care.